What is going on all you Pokemon Collective Maniacs out there? This is Ryan the Pika Pika Papa and today we're talking Lorcana, baby! Woo! I'm pumped. I can't wait. I'm so excited for this product. Now, with that being said, listen, I want you to understand this video is all based on fact. We're going to get into some super deep details about Disney, about Lorcana, about the company that's making Lorcana, because there's a ton of swirl about this product out in the collecting and investing space. And I thought this was an awesome opportunity for us to take a step back and just look at the cold hard facts, right? Because when we spend our hard earned money, we want to make sure that we do it in the most informed way possible. So that is the point of this video. Now, I'm also going to tell you, this isn't a recommendation to buy. This isn't a condemnation of the product. Simply fact, concrete information. The Pika Pika Papa family's pumped, right? We live 45 minutes from the house and mouse like we are annual pass holders. My kids love everything Disney. We are huge Disney fans. My wife for our anniversary wanted a special pair of Disney ears, right? Like that's how hardcore we are. We're going to buy the product. We're going to rip the product. We're going to play the game. We're going to have some fun. And I'm going to set a little aside to hold for the long term too. But I know there are some people who are thinking this might be the next big thing. So I thought it awesome for us to take a minute and step back and actually look at what the product is and what the product isn't. Now, we always base things off of fact, or at least we try our hardest to. So if you've been watching this, if you're into that kind of stuff, if you're in fact-based data mining in the uh, TCG space, Pokemon, the Lorcana in the future, we would love to have you as a member of this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Hey, listen, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, comments, drop them down below. It goes a long way in helping the channel out. And uh, I love talking to you guys and I really appreciate it. So with that being said, listen, Disney Lorcana. What is it and what it isn't? And I started off with looking at these cards that are currently on the market because they are selling for a mint. Now these cards right here are the ones that came out at the D3 Expo. So that's the Disney Expo. There were six cards that came out in a set and when you got the six, the six card set, you also got a seventh card, which was this Mickey. So these are the most recent PSA 10s of each individual card. They're selling for about $2,000 now, which is off of the all time high. There wasn't long ago these were selling for seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve thousand dollars a piece. Now that is too rich for my blood, and this might surprise you by the time we get to the end of the video, but I think two thousand dollars for these cards five, ten years from now, if Lorcana ends up being even half of what we think it might be, these might actually be worth it. And I'm not telling you to go out and buy it. All I'm saying is that two thousand dollars for these promo cards, right? We're going to talk about supply, demand. We're going to talk about scarcity and rarity and demand in the future. But these cards right here, they're the very first ones. There were only X many made, only X many gave out. And in PSA 10s, we know that drives the rarity and collectability of things. So um, really, really interesting. The thing I will say here is if it was me, I would be targeting the Elsa and the Mickey Mouse cards. Nothing against Stitch or Captain Hook or Corella DeVille. But just when I think about the star power in the names, we all know, listen, in the Poké space, right? There's a lot of cards that if it has a Charizard on it, it's going to be worth a hell of a lot more than if it has a Starmie on it, right? So that is what we're going to have to start thinking about here in the Lorcana space as well. If I had to pick two of the seven, I would be all over the Mickey Mouse. I would be all over the Elsa. So then I decided, hey, listen, these cards are already out. Let's learn more about Lorcana. So I simply went into Google and typed Lorcana and hit enter. And I challenge you guys to do the same thing out there. And this is what came up. This is it. Official website of Lorcana by Ravensburger. And that is incredibly important to understand as we go through the rest of this video. Listen, official website of Lorcana by Ravensburger. Look, I click on that. Here's the landing page, beautiful site. And you'll see up in the right hand corner, it says Ravensburger. Even more important, at the very bottom of this page, you'll see the copyright Disney operated by Ravensburger, an official licensee of Disney. Why does that matter? Why is that critically important? It is mission critical that we all understand this. This is why a licensee is some entity that has been granted permission to conduct activities using something that another party owns or controls. Disney owns and controls the characters, the likenesses, the images, all of these things that are going to be on the cardboard that is what Disney owns. The licensee, which is Lord, which is uh, Ravensburger, may pay the licensor for the permission or share revenue arising from activities arising from that permission. So basically what that means is Disney says, yeah, you can use Elsa, you can use Mickey Mouse, you can use Malif Maleficent, but you're going to be paying us on the back end. Ravensburger says, shoot, I'll do that all day in order to use your product and in order to be a part of the Disney machine. So that's how they come to this agreement. And again, this is super common in media and entertainment. Anytime you go anywhere, you see things that are licensed out. Incredibly important to understand all of this as we get into the rest of the video, okay? So then I thought, let's check out this Ravensburger company. Like, hey man, they, they must be 
top of the walk, right? So I went to the Ravensburger website, and this is actually, I had to scroll down. This is actually two screenshots, but I wanted to get it on one slide. So I went to this Ravensburger, which is launching Lorcana, the big bad Lorcana that's going to give Pokemon and Magic the Gathering a run for their money. And their huge banner ad across their first thing was, Mom deserves the best, the thoughtful photo puzzle she'll gift she'll love. I thought I was at the wrong website at first, but then I scrolled down, and as I scrolled down, you hit these little thumbnails where it says puzzles, games, Gravitrax, arts and crafts, uh, picture puzzles, and then you have that little Lorcana square. So you click on that Lorcana square, and it takes you to the website that I was just at. But me, I think Ravensburger, like, shouldn't this shouldn't this be your banner ad? If this is the big bad next product that's going to do hundreds of millions of dollars and take down these entrenched behemoths. Um, Maybe, maybe not. So I did a little more research into Ravensburger, and obviously, as we've already discussed, like they are releasing this product as a licensee of Disney. Um, this is new territory for Ravensburger. Now, they do have tabletop games, which I went and checked out at my local Target. It's called Villainous, and they have several different iterations of it, but Ravensburger has worked with Disney in the past, so this isn't a new relationship, but this is Ravensburger's first voyeur into the TCG space, right? Now, when I did that, I sat and I thought about this company that's gonna take down Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. I thought about the owners of Magic the Gathering and Pokemon because that's really what it's gonna come down to. Like the companies that are producing and that are actually ultimately in charge of this product are the ones who are gonna be the ones who determine the success. So when I talk about Hasbro, right? Everybody knows Hasbro bought Wizards of the Coast back in 1999 for I think $325 million uh, and they all ultimately own Magic the Gathering. Now, regardless of what you think Hasbro has done with Magic the Gathering, I know a lot of people believe very strongly that they have absolutely tanked the product. It is still a big portion of the Hasbro portfolio Folio, and they will eventually get it right. I'm sure they'll get things straightened out, but it is a big part of that company. And Hasbro is one of the biggest toy manufacturers in the whole freaking world, right? Like, I feel pretty good with Hasbro owning Magic the Gathering. Then you think about the Pokemon cards, right? It's owned by three different entities it's owned by Nintendo, Game Freak, and the Pokemon Company International. Again, when I think about the organization that I want to be in charge of Pokemon trading card game that I'm buying, collecting, and investing in, I can't think of much better than Nintendo Game Freak and Pokemon Company International. Like, if I'm ranking the parent companies, it's probably going to go you know, the, the Pokemon ownership of Nintendo Game Freak and Pokemon Company, then it's going to go Hasbro, and Ravensburger is going to be at the very, very bottom, cemently placed in third place. So, very important to understand, very important to think about. Again, doesn't mean Lorcana won't be wildly successful. It just means that they are going to have to uh, adapt their business and change a little bit. So, after that, I thought, hey, why don't we take a look at the Disney company? I've heard so many people say, Disney, if Disney puts their full weight and force behind this product, it's going to be unstoppable. Disney's this merchandising and marketing machine. Well, I think we've already debunked that because we've already seen in every single publication that this isn't a Disney product. Disney is simply the licensor. Ravensburger is the licensee. Ravensburger is the company that's putting this out. But I even decided, hey, listen, let's put that aside. If this is a big enough piece of Disney's portfolio, then they would probably step in and say, hey, Ravensburger, let's give you a little, a little, little tap on the rump, right? Let's help you out a little bit. So the two graphs on the left are the overall uh, operating revenue for the Walt Disney Company in 2022, the whole fiscal year. So they did about $84 billion. Now the left column is the parks, experiences, and products, and the right column is their media and entertainment. And then the area where I have circled in yellow, those are the segments that feed up into that. So you have linear networks, you have D to C, and then on the far right you have, that's where you have your content sales, your licensing, and others, okay? So really, Content sales, licensing, and others was less than 10% of Disney's overall revenue in 2022. And remember, that includes content sales, licensing, and others. Now, other typically is less than 20% of any graph because that's why it's other. If it was bigger than that, it would be called out individually. So maybe, I don't know, maybe licensing was 4% of the overall revenue of Disney in 2022. Now, I also want you to think about this. When you go into supermarkets, when you go into a store, everywhere you look, right, you see yogurt with Disney characters on it. You see string cheese with Disney characters on it. You see ice cream with light Disney characters on it. Disney doesn't make any of that. They license all of that out. So think about the amount of money that they're already generating and that is already in that $4 billion bucket. And now here comes Lorcana. How big of a piece can that really be? The other thing that's super cool and that we as locals here, because Disney is a big driver of just the overall Florida economy. 
The old CEO, Bob Iger, is now back in charge. So Bob Chepik, I'm sure I mispronounced that, Bob Chepik was the CEO recently. He was ousted and they brought Bob Iger back. Bob Iger was a CEO for 15 years. He resigned. Chepik stepped in. People didn't like what he was doing. They kicked him out. They brought Iger back. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Chepik was probably the one who greenlit Lorcana, although in my mind, it probably never got to the desk of the CEO. I just don't think it's a big enough piece of the Disney pie. It probably was approved by somebody at a lower level than that. That. But Bob Iger is old school Disney. He is about the parks. He is about the experience. He is about the media. I promise you this, Bob Iger doesn't give a flying fornication about Disney Lorcana. Not because it's not a cool product, not because it's not going to do well in the long run, but he is one of those guys, he doubles down on the basics. When you're trying to write a ship, we talked about this in the grading card video we just did, right? When we looked at BGS uh, and SGC and how they, they did these crazy things and then they tanked. Bob Iger is all about getting back to parks, getting back to media, and he is not clouding his vision with anything else, okay? So I promise you that's what, matter of fact, the Disney annual passes, they just relaunched those. Chepik had put a pause on them for years. Bob Iger said, no, this is crazy. We want people in the parks. He's launching that. So, um, Again, not saying this will have any direct effect on Lorcana because it's a Ravensburger product, but I promise you the CEO of Disney, it's probably not even on his radar, okay? So I thought that was really cool to look at. And then also, listen, here are the packs. So in this case, I talked about it earlier, the House of Mouse always wins. Look at this. Disney Lorcana booster packs are gonna go for $5.99, okay? Even the Pokemon packs, even with the MSR it price increase to $4.49, Lorcana is 33% more expensive. Why? That's because Ravensburger does not own the product. They've got to cut the mouse, his piece of the pie or piece of the cheese, if you will, in this one, right? Whenever Disney it gets, they get royalty rates, okay? The royalty rate can range from 5 to 20%. So I did a little digging, did a little mat, napkin math. And in 2021, that was the closest I could find, Disney sold $56 billion worth of their licensed products, right? So that's not the revenue they generated, but that's products with Disney characters on it, Disney licensing, $56 billion. $7.3 billion resulted in revenue for Disney, so it's about a 13% revenue rate. So I'm sure Ravensburger is cutting Disney anywhere from 10 to 20% um, of the price of this, and that's why the price is so high. It's not because it's a premium product. It's not because they, they're doing it. It's because they have to share the revenue with Disney. There's two hands in the cookie jar, right? versus the Pokemon company, which owns Pokemon. They can do a lower price because they don't have to share with anybody. Hasbro owns Magic the Gathering. They don't have to share with anybody. They own the whole thing. They can keep the prices more competitive. Like Lorcana is starting off with a foot in the bucket because they are always going to have to share revenue with Disney. So super cool thing to call out. I know a lot of people have been talking about the MSRP prices being higher, but I haven't heard anybody talking about the why. This is a big part of the why. Next thing I thought was, hey, Disney is this marketing machine. I'm not gonna talk a lot about this, but it was really interesting for me to figure out who Disney targets. Now, the graph down here is the leading brands worldwide in 2022 by brand value. No surprise, Disney's up there. What was cool to me is this is worldwide, right? You got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Samsung, Toyota, Coca-Cola, Mercedes-Benz, and Disney. Little old Disney is up there. Like, what kind of brand recognition, what kind of brand power does this company have? It's just absolutely mind-boggling. Obviously, Lorcana has a leg up when it comes to this. This. Kids all over the world know Disney. There's Disney World, Disneyland, there's parks everywhere. The mu music, is, I mean, the music, the media, everything is everywhere. The interesting thing about Disney's though is they, they actually target four to 12 year old children, which I thought was really cool. I have a seven year old and a four year old, so they're, they're targeting us, which is great. Uh, and they've won since we're annual pass holders. But it's because the kids are the ones who make the decisions. They make the decisions, hey, where are we going to go? What are we going to eat? What are we going to buy? Kids, you know, they say happy wife, happy life, but I promise you it's happy children, happy wife, happy daddy. So <laughs> I thought that was cool that they target them. The other really interesting thing that I thought was relevant to this is one of Disney's fastest growing segments is parents, or not parents, but is adults without children. So 40% of their, their park visitors are adults without children. So it doesn't matter if you don't have to just have kids to love Disney. Everybody loves Disney. I thought this was really exciting. And I do think this is a feather in the cap for Lorcana. I think this means that it's going to have a ton of name brand recognition out of the gate. And I think it, uh, you know, it could be really, really good for it long term. So 
Next thing I looked at was some of the cardboard, right? We talk about this all the time in the Pokemon space. Listen, there can be a lesser known Pokemon, but if the card art is awesome, people are gonna buy it and it is gonna drive value. So I looked at these and I was a big time collector and player back in the MTG early days, right? Like I was big into Magic the Gathering. I had Alpha, Beta, you know, Arabian Nights, Unlimited, Revised. I had all of those cards. And I remember that the artwork wasn't that great, but it was okay because Magic the Gathering was just getting going and I was all about the game and I was all about the fun uh, we had a ton of fun and like an idiot I sold all of my cards about I don't know 15 years ago for nothing when I should have held on to them because I'd be a very rich man if I did but that's the story all of us go through okay besides getting down that rabbit hole here was what I thought when I looked at these cards and I just screen grabbed eight of them I'm not overly impressed with this artwork. Like, I'm sure there will be foils. I'm sure there's going to be promos. I'm sure there's going to be other more exciting cards. But, man, this just look it looks dull to me. It falls flat. Like, if Disney Imagineers, which is what Disney calls their artists and their designers and their media people, if Disney Imagineers were in charge of this, I bet these would look way better. Even the Mickey Mouse. You talk about star power. Like, Mickey Mouse has got to be the Zard or at least the Pikachu, right? Mickey Mouse, that card just doesn't excite me. Aurora. Aurora is another big name in the Disney space. Like, her blue dress kind of fades into the blue belt black back and then you look at the yellow cards Hades and then you got Maui up there with his hook and you got LeFou they just you only have one chance to make a first impression there's no Marvel cards in here there's no Star Wars cards in here like you know uh, Disney owns both of them and I get it they're probably holding them out for future releases but man I think they could have done so much more with this first edition set and it just kind of falls flat on me again you can see all these cards online I encourage you go online look at them take a peek I think the set is going to be hyped up enough that it's not going to hurt the initial launch but I do worry about the long-term pro prospects for this so in conclusion, listen, scarcity and rarity and demand are what drive long-term value. Supply and demand is what drives initial price. And what I mean by that is, depending on how much Lorcana comes out in the very beginning is going to d d dictate what the price is because we all know that there's gonna be a lot of demand. But when I think about this in the future, here's the questions that I've been asking myself is, is this product gonna be more or less scarce than 1999 Pokemon cards? Like that's the line in the sand that I've drawn because the, the reality is 20 years from now, I wanna know is these Lorcana a first edition card is going to be comparable to like first edition Pokemon cards, first edition Magic the Gathering. Maybe that's the wrong way to look at it, but at the end of the day, like I need to find some crazy kind of growth out of these cards if I'm going to buy them and hold them for 20 years. Uh, are there going to be more buy and hold collectors of Lorcana than there were of these earlier Pokemon cards? Are there going to be more of these Lorcana cards that are in high grade, high condition, like putting them in sleeves, keeping them well kept than those earlier Pokemon cards? I mean, my answer to the first one is no. I think they're going to print the heck out of this. I think Ravensburger has to because their profit margin is lower. They're going to rely on volume. They're going to rely on volume because again, two hands in the cookie jar, they got to share this money with Disney. So I think they're going to print, 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 print because you got to sell, 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 sell if you want to make up any kind of margin. Now, of course, there's going to be more buy and hold collectors, right? Back in 1999, when Pokemon was coming out, back when the original Magic the Gathering cards were, none of us were buying and holding. We were buying, we were ripping, we were playing. The cards were in terrible condition. We were throwing them all over the room. Nobody thought about condition of cards back then, right? Now it's top of mind for everybody. Now everybody's doing sealed collecting and investing. And then again, layering off of that, I absolutely think idiots like me are going to be getting some cool cardboard. We're going to be sending them in to get graded. I think we've seen that some of these newer Pokemon cards, some of the some of the big hitters can have 10 people. PSA 10s in the 10,000s, 11,000s, 12,000s, uh, and I don't think that's going to be any different for Lorcana. Grading now is infinitely larger than it was uh, back in the early days of Pokemon and in the early days of uh, Magic the Gathering. So when I think about the long-term collectability, the long-term value growth, if there's 10,000 PSA 10s of first edition Mickey cards, like it's not going to be the same as finding a PSA 10 of a red cheek Pikachu from 1999 first edition, right? That just, you can't even compare the two. You just can't. So I want everybody to understand what they're getting into. I'm not saying don't collect it. I'm not saying don't buy it. I am a big fan of Lorcana. I'm going to be buying. I'm going to be holding. But if you think you're going to be buying a mansion by the sea because you're going to buy and hold a case or two cases or 10 cases of Disney Lorcana, we probably won't. I think it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be fun. As I said, we're absolute buyers. We're going to be players. I am hoping my kids fall in love with it because I think it's really, really cool. Again, don't think this is the equivalent of getting in on the ground floor because there's all kinds of idiots like me who are going to be out there. We're all going to be buying. We're all going to be holding. We're all going to be sitting here thinking, I hope to make some money in the future. So in the future, there's going to be plenty of sealed product to buy, in my opinion. 
if this game is a success, and I do think it's going to be a success. I don't think you measure success on, does it overtake Pokemon? Does it overtake Magic the Gathering? Like, I don't think that's a fair comparison. Do I think the games are going to be fun? Yes. Do I think they're going to sell a good amount? Yes. Do I think it'll be successful and it'll be around for years and years to come? I absolutely do. And to me, that's the definition of success. Not upending these entrenched Goliaths who've been doing it for 20 years. But I do think, hey, listen, those D3 cards, I think they're going to be a sound investment. Not saying I'm pulling the trigger at two grand, not suggesting you do that, but I do think that they have some opportunity to be really, really valuable in the long run due to everything we talked about, right? Scarcity, rarity, and demand years down the road. And as I always say, and as I always end with, I want you to collect, buy, play what makes you happy. If it makes you happy to buy 50 cases of sealed Lorcana booster boxes and put them in your closet, Frickin' do it. Light it up, boys and girls. I just want you to be happy. I just want you to enjoy this hobby. I just know that there's been a ton of rhetoric, a ton of talk about Disney Lorcana, and I thought it was critically important for me to share with my chess players um, just some cold hard facts and to see where we land from there. So, as always, hey, if you've made it to the end of the video and you haven't hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Hit it. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up. If you have something to say, drop it down below. I hope you all have a epic week, and I appreciate you more than you know. See you later, everybody.